Hi there, Fatima. Hi. <laughs> Hi, it's good to see you. Um, so you're back home in Peru? Yes, I am. Fantastic. Uh, so I'm really excited to be speaking with you again. You know, I have such fond memories about us meeting um, in Brazil. Um, yeah. those those years ago uh, when I was there uh, and I just thought it would be great to kind of reflect a bit on you know who you are you know being back home now you know that journey going back home and also a bit about your practice mm -hmm. but um yeah maybe if you could just introduce who you are and and what's going on over there um, hi, I'm Fatima Rodrigo. I'm from Lima and I'm currently living living in Lima um, I'm um, I came back from Sydney and uh, the lockdown started, so I've been here since um, since March, and I'm planning and I'm planning to stay here. I think at, uh, until the end of the year, uh, just uh, working at the studio and uh, doing some research for new projects, etc. Yeah, yeah. And so the work that you did create at ArtSpace was uh, very much driven by. Um, Sabado Gigante, is that right? Yes, perfect. <laughs> I mean, this is a very kind of nostalgic popular culture, uh, you know, I suppose history that um, I imagine many Peruvians and many, you know, people across, uh, you know, the, the Americas have experienced, especially Central South America. And I'm just wondering if you could kind of tell, tell us a little bit about that, because I'm sure that there are, you know, people watching this who also probably, you know, have a connection to that TV show. Uh, yes, of course. Well, actually, that <clears throat> uh, that installation is part of a series that I've, uh, I've been working around uh, seven years. And it is about uh, reproducing these sets that were used um, by base, uh, mainly by uh, romantic ballad singers or um, by TV shows like this, this contest TV shows in which uh, also were uh, these this very famous singers invited. And I started this series because I, uh, it was very impressive for me to see how um, the aesthetics of these sets were uh, very modern and they had these um, amazing influences from modern art, uh, for example, from, I don't know, a ge geometric abstraction or minimalism or, or lots of other uh, very trendy um, movements. But at the same time, uh, all the content of the music and all the, uh, or, or the things that happened on, on those TV shows were uh, very conservative and they had a lot of um, uh, sexist uh, speeches. And it was, um, I, I, I was very interested in, the, in, in that contrast. And at the same time, um, it helped me uh, to talk about how uh, the, ideas of modernity work in Latin America. Uh, and I think uh, it is very interesting to, to understand, it's very important to understand that those ideas of modernity that come, that came uh, with, the, with, the pros with the colonization process are uh, not only coexist, but also enable violence against uh, vulnerable populations. So, but and at the same time, um, it was very interesting to see how um, uh, the, the people that weren't uh, part of this uh, elite, intellectual elite or whatever, uh, were consuming these these art trends by pop uh, through popular culture. So uh, it was very interesting to see how uh, that translation uh, allowed me to talk about these issues, but at the same time. To, to understand how those um, trends were introduced to, to Latin America through popular culture. Um, and yeah, so and during the last years, I decided to, to choose some sets uh, in which I could fi find some uh, history or some specific uh, issues that happened on those sets. And that's the case of Sabado Gigante because um, I think every every South American know that uh, the host that uh, is called San, uh, Don Francisco, who, who was very famous, and I think his show was like 20 years uh, broadcasted, and it was very very successful. Yeah. Uh, was repeatedly ac accused uh, for uh, sexual harassment and also intent of rape, 
And these these accusations were silenced because this um, this show was this show was very successful. So I think um, it is very important to see uh, because all those installations are are very pretty and they and they have this I don't these aesthetics that uh, which people can relate to. But it's I think it's very interesting to make like this first. Um, uh, I don't know this. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but um, like this first communication with a with a viewer, uh, and then when you start uh, like going through the through the layers, you can understand yeah. what happened and and how that and how, and how we can explain uh, like post colonial societies through these kind of mechanisms in which um, lots of social issue, issues are. Um, hidden behind sure. these beautiful sets and so this uh, is this is your work at art space yes that we see here and it's very beautiful i remember um you know you you know originally doing up the plans for this and and like all the led lights change and they're very mm -hmm. colorful could you yes. maybe explain what was the kind of driving influence for this particular set uh, well, this is um, this is an exact uh, reproduction of of a set that was used in in this show, Sábado Gigante. I changed uh, I changed some things uh, because I even though I, I like to to present them as sets, I also think them I I like to think them as works of art and like recontextualize them. So I always change some things for them to work at a gallery. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, I, choose, um, I chose uh, different colors of lights uh, because I think it's also, in, it's also very important to talk about the absence of, of, the, of, of, of the person who, who is supposed to be singing yeah. uh, the set, so on the set. So um, I, the change of lights, I think uh, it gives you some idea of that of something that 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 is happening there, but there is not nobody. Uh, so it's like a ghost, you know. It is like like the set becomes uh, alive in some way. Um, so yeah, I think the 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 lights were very important for for that effect too. Okay. And, and when you were, was there a moment when you were a child, maybe, or what? When was that period when you realized that? There's something sinister going on here. Well, actually, I was um, I, I realized that when I was uh, an adult and then when I was already an artist, um, because I started thinking about uh, all those things that I've seen when I was when I was a child or or when I was especially when I was a teenager. Um, mm -hmm that made me understand uh, some ideas, for example, of love or, or, or relationships or family that were very uh, like encapsulated in some uh, conservative way of thinking. Yeah. And, uh, and I was very, very, uh, I, have, I have, I until I uh, also now have this like fetish with popular culture. And when mm -hmm. I was a kid, I, I saw a lot of soap operas and like romantic movies and all that stuff. Like, so yes, I started ask, asking myself, um, why do I have this, this like, I, I understand that this is not the way that I want to think, but at the same time, there's something like deep inside me that, uh, like, uh, that with which I struggle. So, uh, so yeah, I started uh, looking, like, like revisiting, uh, uh, the popular culture that that I consumed when I was younger, yeah. and there is when I started uh, analyzing m much more deeply the, the the aesthetics and I don't know the, the visual mechanisms that they used, and I used uh, and I used those those uh, patterns to relate it with how with how contemporary art operates also. So. Uh, I, I I also <clears throat> like to do that connection between uh, what's 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 the role of of art history in uh, like per perpetuating this per or, or I don't know like fixating these structures of power that still operate in in contemporary art world. Mm -hmm. So I I also 
like to do that those connections and i think the sets are 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 very important to to talk about those issues because uh, yeah they have all all the connections there you can see them yeah so architecture is really i mean in the kind of set design architecture the built environment uh as in the human built environment has been very much part of your um your deep thinking of uh, even the impact on landscape, because I, I remember when we first met, you talked about um, certain structures in Peru that are very much within the Amazon and the you know and the yeah. trees and the, and the and the animals etc. Are kind of breaking apart mm -hmm. this you know yeah. this architecture, and I have very vivid memories of that, and I think it's a very powerful thought. And I was just wondering, you know, if you could maybe talk a little bit more about that, because the Amazon is such an incredible ancient place. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I have uh, one one piece, uh, and I think yeah, it's with this crisis, for example, I am revisiting that that work, and I want to like continue with that project because it is about uh, a structure that was built, uh, I think, during the sixties, and it it's now the University of uh, the National University of Peruvian Amazon. And it is one of the most, well, maybe the most important university of the, that region. And it has, um, the, the, the architecture is crazy. It's like a, I don't know, like a Soviet period uh, building. And it, it has nothing to do with, with the community. It has nothing to do with, with the environment. And, uh, and at the same time, um, educational systems in Peru are not good. So, and yeah. so it's very ironic to see how this university has been, um, like it, it, it imposes itself uh, into nature, but at the same time, nature is like struggling, struggling to, to destroy it. So uh, it's, it looks like an, a, a, like an abandoned building, but it's not abandoned actually. Uh, it's just that the, um, it, it, yeah, it's not conditioned to, to, to the weather or to the, yeah, to the environment. And at the same time, they don't invest money on, on doing such a, a good work with mm. the building. And, and yeah, it's very sad because it is a place that uh, it's very important for students uh, of the community. And also it is a very poor region. So it's like, you see this, it's, it's all green and then you see this this it's amazing visually but at the same time it's it's also a way of of uh, talking about how sometimes um the go governments or or power uh, structures just uh, spend money building this uh, this demonstration de demonstrations yeah. of power mm -hmm. and no this is not no, this is not the one. I think this this that could be one uh, one part of a university, but it's not on the, on the same area. Uh -huh. I could maybe I could show. Yeah, because I did see that one actually, and I thought, and because I've I've been looking at this picture for for actually in fact since we met, <laughs> um, yes. a long time ago, because it looks very similar to to some of the sets, which is on. Yes, it's also yeah. It's the architecture is is like yeah. It has this like modern uh, aesthetic. It's it, it's a very interesting building, but at the same time, it's like nobody knows why it was built there, who exactly built it, so. Yeah, it's there, and there's a lot of issues with uh, why why th there's no policies um, taking into account what the community needs and uh, how we can be, how they can make a sustainable building that in which good uh, policy educational policies are held. It's mm. so yeah, I think it is in a on, in a way it is um, it is the same. Uh, it is the same thing that I that I talk about in with the sets, that these amazing structures that at the same time they are covering a lot of social issues and um, I think yeah I can I'm going to share start share okay yeah here is uh, ah yes of course because this is the the work. Yes. Yeah, this is the work. Um, then I can 
try, I, I will show you some images of the university. And this is, yeah, this is the projection of the video. And then I also made this like prototype of one part of the building. Um, and for example, this is, uh, this is amazing because in this part of the building, um, in the, on the inside, the classes are, um, uh, the, those, um, those, th these are like ladders, like, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there's so, a structure inside. Yeah, exactly. And then, the, the, then you can see the desks on the blackboard. And I went to film when it was, uh, it was summer. So it was, it looked like nobody was, uh, had been to that place for years, but it was just a few months. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm very curious in, in these built structures, especially in um, times like today when we're with COVID-19, um, we were kind of reflecting before um, we started this uh, conversation in regards to how everyone... Sorry, I, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was uh, playing the video to show you some... Oh, yeah, please, please show us. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, I'm gonna share again this. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, there were animals and... Did you, can you play that video? Yes, I will just turn the sound down because it's, it's a bit hard. But yeah, it's kind of long, so I will just... Uh, yeah, maybe we talk about like the importance of structures even today with the COVID-19 situation. <laughs> Um, you know, before you were reflecting on, um, you know, what was it like to get out of Australia during that period after the Biennale just opened and then to get home, but then to be in quarantine a hotel, but now you're kind of in, you know, your home, you can't really go anywhere. I mean, is this something that um, this kind of entrapment, you know, within the house out there, there's this kind of virus? Mm -hmm. did how was that kind of equated to some of your past practice and interests in buildings? Um, well, for me, it's very, uh, it's not uh, the, uh, the fact that I can't go out. It's not in, in that, um, in that case, it's not a problem because I do most of my re my research through internet because, uh, there are mostly buildings that do not exist anymore or I can, yeah, but the thing that is, it's been, it's been very, very difficult is to rethink my work in terms of not having, uh, like, the audience experiencing my work. Um, uh, yeah, like, not, not being able to show it and, and, and maybe thinking about new ways of doing installation, for example, because for me, it's very important that uh, people have, like, this direct contact with my work. Uh, yeah, the visual thing, and, and, and I also um, like people to touch things and to go all, like, all around them. So that's, that's being a, a major issue for me now. Um, so I'm trying to think about new ways to get, yeah, to get there. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the main issue for now. Uh, it's very, it, I'm sure that, in in in, a, in in some time I will be able to do that again. I hope so. But I think it's it's a very important uh, it's a very important time to 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 think about those things and also to to think new ways of uh, making contemporary art much more democratic and much more available to to people that maybe do not go to galleries or do not go to museums or. Yes. So yes, yeah, so this is it's, it's, it is very it's, it is being a, a very hard process, and I am doing some a lot of tests and a lot of research, but I think it's going to be a good opportunity to to get there. To yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's like this video work you're showing now. I mean, this building is pretty stunning. I mean, the architecture is extraordinary compared to you know many university buildings you see around the world. 
Um, oh, there you go. There's the section that um, you recreated. I mean, there, there, there is this kind of decay on this building. And I just want to kind of uh, maybe reflect a little bit more on what you mentioned mm -hmm. before about even in regards to commerce and education and community engagement and really why is this university there? So you kind of are now rethinking your own uh, practice in a more democratic way or more accessible way. And as part of Niren, I mean, that was always my kind of aim was to, you know, artists who come from either remote, you know, um, places of the world who are, or who are not kind of centered within the kind of often Eurocentric Western art world or practice can actually be part of a global network of artists and creativity. Yeah. So, I mean, is this kind of, do you, do you, do you, I suppose I'm really interested in this building. I mean, do you hold any hope for this building? I mean, if, if there was some way to kind of maybe salvage or kind of invigorate uh, this this kind of this project that you that you're working on is that possible is there a democracy within that i'm not sure like well um i think with uh, um i know that with this health crisis uh like uh, this this university is suffering a lot and well all the amazon amazon communities suffering a lot so I'm not sure that how, like, if according to how things are now in Peru, if we can think about a hope, a, a hopeful future for this building. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's 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 going to happen next with this with this building exactly. Uh, but yeah, I would like to maybe go back there, and I would I would like to do some. Uh, well, whenever I can, I I, I can travel. I I would. Uh, like to to do the other part, like uh, talk with the community and understand what's going on around that building, uh, because I remember that I did some some questions and it was crazy how uh, people. It, it is very important the relationship that people have with this building. They there are some some people that tell you that they are convinced that, for example, aliens built it. Mm -hmm. So so that is a like. Uh, an evidence that it 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 is it's very problematic for for and uh, yeah and I also think that uh, I know that for example there had been a lot of protests uh, by the the students on and the teachers because they they don't get paid and lots of things that always happen with public universities in Peru so. Uh, so yes, it is a it's a thing. It's a crisis. It, it is a crisis that it's been going on for year for many years, and with 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 a context right now, I think it's just going to get worse. So yeah. yes, I, I I don't know what's going to happen with the building, and I I I'm absolutely fascinated by it. By it, it is amazing. I I really I really love it, and I think that if it was built, uh, taking into account uh, the necessities of the community, uh, it would have worked much better. So, yeah, so it's, it's very complicated because it's fascinating, as you can see, but at the same time, it's very creepy because you can feel that, that when you go there, it is like, you can feel that, that contradiction between nature and this amazing building and it's, yeah, it's very... Yeah, so if we hang on to that, maybe that contradiction, you know, as a metaphor. Um, I'm very curious, I mean, your own practices about these kind of, uh, what lie, what kind of lies underneath, yeah? Like, what are we, you know, what is dancing in front of us? What is, you know, kind of uh, seducing us in a way? If we go back to, you know, the gigantic Saturday, I see that that still continues today as a TV show. Uh, I think it was cancelled a few years ago, but uh, yeah. it continued for like yeah for a lot of time yeah yeah so 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 there is this kind of like uh this remnants of this kind of energy of what that is the same with with this building and mm -hmm. um this kind of idea of democracy i mean are you really thinking about an awakening as well i mean is that something that drives you about what is revealed what's underneath um, I, I didn't understand that question. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, could, could you repeat it? Just uh, sure. 
Sure. Um, so like this building is, is kind of falling apart or the problems with you know, the university in, in, in the Amazon, um, the same with the gigantic Saturday television show, they're almost, a, there's a disguise. Mm -hmm. um, but, 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 they're, but they're fantastic and, and they're really quite okay. extraordinary. Um, mm -hmm. But there are hidden messages, like especially about the treatment of women. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I was just wondering, um, how is it that you expose that? Well, I think uh, it is, uh, well, to start, it is a very personal thing because I have these this contradictions myself. I, I, I have this, I really love romantic, Lat like Latin American music and that it's very, very sexist, but I like it. Like I really enjoy listening to it. And uh, so that's, that's how my, like I was, I was telling you, that's how my research started, trying to understand why do we love this music? And, um, but at the same time, I think uh, it is very important to me that these that this, uh, sets and these buildings are uh, visually interesting because I think that's the way how post-colonialism and modernism works. Yeah. Uh, they, they, those ideas that makes you that make us think that we want things that we don't have, or um, we need to implement uh, foreign models uh, in opposition to our non-Western histories, and this is how this philosophy operates. Uh, it is, and and that's why it is very important to me to. I, 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 I always make an effort to do my works like visually very, very, like very, well, not, I don't want to say visually interesting, but uh, it, it's a thing but for it's me. Like, though, isn't it? It's this kind of like attraction and seduction and yes. to kind of draw the viewer in because really that's how it was created in the first place, wasn't it? This kind of dance yes, production. Exactly. So, so all my work has this contradiction because it is like this fetish to those aesthetics that I accept that I have them and I, and I love them and I think they are visually beautiful, but they have this very, very uh, like complicated uh, issues going on uh, behind or around that we have to be aware of before we can uh, just enjoy them. So, and I think that's how, like, yeah, that, that, that's how our, our society has been built uh, through history uh, since mm -hmm. we, yeah, since, since the colonizer came, it, the colonizers, it's, yeah, so. So if we think about this idea of the national day, because I'm so fascinated in that, because every <laughs> country around the world or state or, you know, in indigenous communities or other communities have this idea or a sense of a national day of pride or of complications. Um, like in Australia, we have Australia Day and we've always been wanting to, you know, there are some people who want to move the date because it's, you know, of course, for us, it's, we call it Invasion Day. Um, and uh, that kind of brings up a lot of different kind of um, mixed messages around what, what are we celebrating? And do you get a sense of that in Peru and also because it's such a, a complicated, like the Americas is so extraordinary, but also incredibly complicated mixed with, you know, different mm -hmm. versions of colonialism, but also very similar colonialism. I mean, yeah. But you also have your own national identity as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then when, of course, you're talking about architecture and which is very specific to Peru, that, that mm -hmm. architecture, but then you're looking at the, you know, gigantic Saturday, which is right across the kind of the, the Americas there, most of the Americas. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean for you? Because is it kind of a bit um, contradictory or? Yeah, it is definitely. Uh, and I think that, yeah, it is important at some point to celebrate a national day. And it is important to, to recognize all the amazing things that Peru has. But I think it is also uh, a call to understand what's going on, especially during this context. Uh, and also trying to understand in which, um, with, under which systems uh, our Republic was funded, because even though it was like a rebellion from, from colonizers, they used like a lot of uh, structures that were 
that came from there and, the, and, and that I think are still going on. So, um, yeah, of course, it's very important to celebrate uh, our, like, mm. our nation, but it's also a, a good excuse to, to, to analyze uh, how our, our countries are operating and, and, how, and which our, our privileges are and, uh, and to understand, uh, yeah, the diversity, but at the same time, uh, what makes us uh, part of the same system and, and how that we, and we, we need to recognize those differences and accept them. And I think that mm -hmm. is a very, very important issue in Peru that, uh, yeah, the, it's the, the level of segregation and discrimination is, it's, it's still too, too hard. So, yeah. And do you think yeah. the COVID-19 situation is really exposing this? I mean, you, even within your own practice, you've talked about how it is that you can be more democratic, um, which has really highlighted your original concerns anyway. Mm. But, uh, for example, the virus knows no boundaries. And so it's exposing yeah. all of these systems. But I imagine that there are very positive ways in which that people could work through this and governments could work through this. Yes, uh, well, I think that, uh, yeah, COVID has no boundaries, but at the same time, if you have money, you're much, much more safe than, <laughs> yeah, it's not that true that, like, COVID doesn't discriminate because, well, at, at this point, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's very hard for everybody because, as I was telling you, the, the health system has collapsed. So even though if you have money to go to the best hospital, maybe you can't find a bed. But uh, yes, I think uh, COVID uh, is exposing those, those issues. And uh, yes, and I think it is a crucial time to understand how we were living before and, and w which drove us to do things. And I think that this... Uh, like uh, capitalism and, 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 that, and that system in which uh, the art world is inscribed, like even though we, we, we don't want it to be inscribed, it is. Um, it is a very important time to, to, to understand that and to analyze that and to, starting, and to start thinking about work uh, from that place. And I also, for, for example, I, I, something that, that, that struck me is uh, why do we artists, in, especially in, in, in Latin America, uh, we, we, we are so eager to, to show our work in Europe and in the US and like we are, it, it, and, and, I, and I'm one of those persons. I, I think about it and I have these goals, but at the same time, and now, and now I'm thinking like, what am I doing to, for my local community? Like what, like we have, we have to start working uh, on that now. So for example, I, for now, now I'm, I'm working on some collaborative projects with other artists. And I think that is very, very important to understand what's our, what's our, I don't know, our mission here and start thinking about local and not like try to forget about uh, those goals that come also from, from that system that we need to go out and we need to be seen. And, and I think uh, this is why like now we are forced to stay in Peru and well, Peruvian artists, of course, and we need to, to start understanding each other and to start seeing also which part of the art is not being considered in the scene of contemporary art, um, yes, yes. for example, yeah, traditional arts or indigenous arts, it, they, they are still considered like in the, in the edge of the, of the art scene. And that's a thing that it has to change like yes. now. And it's kind of like, it's almost like within Australia too. I mean, we're breaking down those boundaries for indigenous artists here because, but still most uh, artists who are not seen as that kind of European Western artist are seen through the, through the eyes of anthropology, for example, or as you're yeah. saying, kind of, on the edge, but a different kind of edge to what Niran and the Biennale is talking exactly, about. Exactly, yes. <laughs> so bringing that in too, because I know that Lola Amira, you know, who's in, who's in Niran, the South African artist, you know, mm -hmm. was very interested in the kind of collaborations that, you know, that, that, um, that they have with, you know, other parts of the South, 
for example, mm -hmm. and I know that there was also the South project that happened many years ago where there were collaborations between Latin America, Africa, New Zealand, Australia, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, like all of the kind of the South conversations and sort of us going through the, the, the eye of Europe or the mm -hmm. eye of North America, as you say, that kind of that, um, that uh, the commerce of that art world is very powerful um, and it has its own worth, it has its own trajectory, but it uh, often leaves out the extraordinary creative practices and cultures from the rest of the world. And I think this is, you know, I'm really excited about this kind of uh, connection between Peru and Australia um, in the context of this conversation, but also how you are in the Biennale and, and many other, you know, Latin American artists are in the Biennale to, con to connect, but not going through the eye of Europe or, or the, you know, the United States, for example, yeah. but like, you know, really kind of um, traversing into other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, I think that what you say about coronavirus is very interesting. I mean, it exposes what communities are also very fragile and where we need to focus and to have um, understanding and maybe systems need to change. And I think this is what your work's about, isn't it? You're kind of like identifying certain systems and mm -hmm. popular culture and architecture and saying, hey, that needs to change. Would you think that that's something is part of your, your practice? Yes, totally. Like I, uh, yes, it is. It, I am. I am very committed to expose, uh, like, and, and to propose new ideas of, of thinking about uh, under, understanding the world and to to also understanding official history. Uh, and in Peru, yeah, and I think in in all uh, Latin America, uh, we we don't have much information about. Uh, for example, about colonization, we don't, we are not taught in in school. How how did it happen? Uh, I was, I remember that when I was uh, very, like before, uh, like in nursery school, I was taught like they taught us a song about how Christopher Columbus came to <laughs> to to Latin America and, and he practically and he saved us, he saved us. They they. Uh, and they and he civilized us so yeah it is it is very important to uh like even though my my work is not uh, very academic and i i don't uh, like I, I i'm not that um my research is much more intuitive intuitive and i think that is very important because it's also uh, um it brings uh, into contemporary art things that people can relate uh, with very very quickly and i think that is a very good way to uh, to communicate uh, with this whole other part of of society that that doesn't necessarily needs to be related to, to contemporary art or to or to an intellectual culture and in that way i think that i can through my work propose new ideas of of changing those structures uh, in in different ways uh, from from whenever from wherever we can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the things that you're saying echoes for me through Australia, like Captain Cook. You know, apparently came here to, you know, save everyone to civilize the savages, etc. Yes. These are very yes. real um, issues that have huge impact, and I think that there's there's often a lot of fear around that, um, and and and. Uh, but an actual fact, there's a lot of devastation around that as well. And I think to kind of reflect on all of that, as you say, intuitively, is a very meaningful way, I think, to practice as well, because you can connect with many different um, people. Yes. Um, but hey, Fatima, it's been great to chat with you. Yes, I hope that my English is very, very, uh, I don't know, rusty, no, because I don't, <laughs> I don't practice it here in Peru, so... Um, well, I hope I made myself clear. <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you so much. And I wish you and your family, you know, the best for these difficult times and for your arts practice. You know, I'm really excited about, you know, learning more about the, the collaborations that you're doing, um, especially through the eye of, you know, the Northern Yes. Hemisphere. Yes, I, I'm trying to, to, as I was telling you, um, I'm trying to work to, to for example, now I'm, I, I'm designing a, a video game with my nephew that has nine years old and he's like into code. And I thought, okay, now is, is the time to, 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 I don't know, to think 
of, of course it's going to be very simple and it's going to be like a new thing but i but yes i think that's this is the opportunity to experiment and to uh, to, to find new ways to get to people that uh, you weren't uh, getting there before and yeah. uh, yes i think if we can if we can uh, i don't know rescue some good things about this crisis it is that we have to do a, a very very deep reflection on on how we were living before you're absolutely right and i think that artists apart and creatives apart from making our work and collaborating you know the, the, there is so much uh, positivity and also kind of movement when artists and creatives work with you know many mm -hmm. different industries like you're saying even with coding um, even with the education sector like with architecture with with cultural um, events and societies uh, just yeah 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 and I think that this is the time I absolutely agree with you well have a great evening I know it's your evening over there <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> yeah everything's fine so and well you have a yeah you have a good day because you're just starting the day it's crazy <laughs> I, know, I know it's an, an amazing world and um a shout out there to all the um peruvian um mob out here in australia and also back in your homelands and around the world and uh take care yeah you too i hope i see you soon and yeah absolutely